<clears throat> so this is how it's gonna work. Lauren Bailey is gonna be first, and then it's gonna be Richard Brown, and then it's gonna be Cameron Contreras, then Maya Davis, then Sean, I Aaron Enriquez, then Martin Garcia, then Ashley Carey, and then Joshua Gonzalez, and then Derek, and then Haley, and we're going like that, so. I think Richard Brown needs uh, until tomorrow. If I start now, I could send my menu in today and do my presentation tomorrow. Whatever you decided, Chip, it's fine for me. Lauren, let's start with you. All right, go ahead, Lauren. Go ahead. Okay, stupid question. So I just go and I just open it up and I don't know, do I have to share my screen or anything? Yeah. I do? Okay. I'm, yes. We you know how to share it? I've never shared my screen before. Okay, there, there should be somewhere on the screen. It should have a, a, a thing that says share screen. Let's see. If you there get down to the, 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 where all the pictures are. Um, I see. Phone, it says share I see screen. everybody's um, picture. <coughs> so if you go down. And you move your cursor, it's gonna appear in security, chat, where the chat is. That's on the side of the chat, it says share screen. Okay, I see it. <clears throat> so just the... Uh, and you mark it with what, 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 do you, what is the, the, that you wanna share with us? Oh. Our... It's it's not on here. Um, okay. Did y'all get my presentation that I sent yeah. to y'all? Yeah, okay. I did. Uh, let me see if I can share it for you. And okay. then you can talk about it. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm pulling it up. I have it if you want me, Chef. Oh, oh, yes, Chef. Okay. So, um, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Just, okay. So the. Yeah, Lauren, just tell me when to change the okay. slide. Okay. So the name of my is the Bry Rack. Uh, it's a fine dining restaurant. I'm the one that changed uh, my restaurant name last night, but anyways, I feel like this name is better. Um, and uh, it's a fine dining restaurant. You can change the, the slide, please. Um, my concept is fine dining, and my mission statement is kind of like come experience the fine experience. <laughs> I thought it sounded good. Um, next slide, please. Um, my uh, This is my menu design. It's shortened to the point. Um, no pictures because um, the fine restaurants that I've heard about and been to, uh, they didn't have pictures on theirs. So I didn't, I didn't feel like it was right for my menu. But, um, and my menu selections are very fresh and elegant, uh, I feel. And also I have um, entrees for vegans and vegetarians. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, hold on. Sorry. There you go. Okay, so this is the start. This is some of, one of my three appetizers. It's dry morel bisque. I consider it the star um, of my menu. Um, all of the actual price total, the serve, all the numbers are here. Uh, five servings, which would equal five thirty-seven per portion. And 30% of food costs would bring the menu cost to $17.91 per. Um, it is a fancy restaurant, so uh, yeah, just keep in mind. I know the price is kind of the same high, but it's, anyways. And the next is escargot, which I consider a workhorse. 
uh, actual total price for uh, uh, all of them is 25.10. Four servings per portion is 6.28 per portion. 30% food cost is 20.92 menu price. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next is um, bruschetta, my last appetizer, which if I had to pick one at all, I would consider this a dog um, because it's cheap. And, um, you know, a dollar twenty-one per portion. And if you had 30% food cost, you know, it's uh, that's what the menu price would or should be. So, um, so then next slide, please. Uh, next is uh, 32 Oops, ounce. Sorry. Rib oh, you're good. Uh, 32 ounce ribeye, which I consider a star in my menu. Um, it's pretty expensive, but actual price is 61.60, and serves three. Uh, anyways, all the math is right there. Um, I hope I got it. I hope it's detailed enough. Um, anyways, next slide, please. Uh, next is the vegetarian slash vegan uh, portion of my menu, the black bean burger, which I consider a workhorse. Uh, actual price total is eleven eighty seven for two servings. It's five ninety four per portion. Thirty percent food cost brings it to nineteen seventy nine uh, menu price. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next is dunk. Duck confit, which I consider a workhorse. Um, actual price is seven seventeen. Two portions add thirty percent to the food cost, and it brings it to the menu price. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for my dessert menus, I have a chocolate tart, mousse tart, uh, which I consider a work. Um, actual price to make the entire pie is twenty two fifty five for eight servings. I would bring the portions to two eighty two, and then if you add food costs, I bring the menu price to nine forty. Uh, next slide, please. Then there's New York cheesecake, which I consider a workhorse. Also, um, actual price to make it is forty three fifty five. Uh, I can't see my numbers with eight. Yeah, eight. Oh, I didn't, I forgot to put the, sorry, the price of the per, per portion uh, that I cost. But if you add 30%, the menu cost is, uh, you know, 18. Bear with me, guys. I'm not good at publicly speaking. Um, You're doing good. You're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> okay. I did that one. Next slide, please. So my last um, uh, dessert on my dessert menu is brandy bread pudding with a caramel sauce. I consider it to be a star. Um, there's eight servings per portion and the actual price total to make it is $19.92. Um, anyways, if you add the 30% uh, 30 food cost to it, menu price would be $8.30. I have adjusted my uh, prices a little bit on my menu so um to what i feel like would be right mm -hmm. so that's why the that's why my menu prices are a little different than the calculated prices but i just wanted to explain that uh next next slide please so then this is i had to split it up into two um two slides because it was too long but this is the first the top of my sales forecast for the week and I would be closed on Mondays and open uh, every day uh, every rest of the day of the week uh, my average uh, lunch I'm open for lunch and dinner uh, my average ticket price is you know around 65 bucks for lunch and dinner you know around $98 um, and it just uh, next slide please Yes. And um, Sorry. is that it? That's it. Yeah, as you can see on the last slide of my sales forecast, um, you know, whatever you get up to the 
the weekend days, you know, it just increases because, you know, obviously, you know, my restaurant, the people are going to come on the weekends and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's my presentation. I hope it was good. And Great job. Thank Great you. job. Good job. Thank you. Uh, let me just write down a few notes and I'll stop sharing. Hold on one second. There we go. Great job. Thank you. I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> and now it's now you're done. Yay. <laughs> now you can listen. Um, hold on. Oh, hey, so not Richard, but uh, who's the next person after Richard Brown? Anybody? Uh, do you remember? I remember. Uh, hold on. Chef Pablo got kicked off. His, his internet's coming back. Um, let me just finish writing my notes real quick. Great job. I, um, let me ask him who. It's the next person alphabetically, and it could oh, be it? Yeah, it's All just right. in alphabetical order. Maya, do you want to? Uh... It could be. I could be wrong. I th there might be yeah. one person ahead of her. He's, a, he's texting me right now. So. OK. But Maya, you want to do it? Oh, I'm so nervous, y'all. Oh, you'll do fine. I was, too. <laughs> But let's let, let let me wait and uh you can do it you got it you got it yeah hold on i'm, I'm hoping chef poplar will come back on uh is that him yeah hey chef all right uh she did a great job Oh, fantastic. I lost internet. So Cameron Contreras is next. Said, Pablo, you missed my presentation. In the middle, like, uh, uh, my internet uh, is connect, uh, Lauren. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cameron? Uh... Cameron? Is he here, Chef? Because there you have, you have on the forecast, you also have the area check. Yes, 1290, there okay. you are. So you think 1290 is a good price for, your, for a food truck average? I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good. I had to work with it a little. Um, the way I set it up, I would be doing lunch and dinner, but then I would also want to ca um, catch the the late walkers, the late crowds, the people who stay up till like six in the morning and don't have nothing to do. They just want to eat. So it's set up to where, you know, Monday is kind of a slow day and Tuesday is medium, Wednesday it probably drops back down a little bit under because it's Wednesday. Most people, towards the middle of the week, they start to eat at home. Thursday really starts the weekend because some people um, that have, like, corporate jobs, their weekend starts on Thursdays. So around dinner time, it will pick up. Dinner time is where I would make my most money because I would be closing late. Um... Which would bring me at a total average sale of two thousand and two thousand four hundred and twenty. Go down, go down. <clears throat> That's uh, your average sales. Yeah. Okay. 
A week, yeah. It's good. <clears throat> and go back. You think that you can make money doing the two thousand dollars a week? <clears throat> yeah, because I mean I don't plan on having I guess that much people working with me. Like of course it would include include for me to do a lot of prep work and I'm willing to put in the work because I've worked a lot of jobs and I kinda got my feel of everything and with me wanting to go in business for myself, I wouldn't want to cramp my own style. Good job, Maita. Great job. Oh my gosh, my Lita used to call me that. <laughs> oh, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. I do. That's why I chose that name because my brother used to call me as nickname growing up and my mom did as well <laughs> um, my average calculation sheet I just basically put together it looks good um it looks good. some kind of meals and appetizers that people you know would choose um they all good, come up to about a reasonable price Okay, Maita, you're done. Oh. <laughs> okay, Chef. Thank you, guys. Great very, job. Very, very well done. Good job. Let's go with Sean. Get out of the chair. Can you can you unshare the screen, please? Yes. There you go. Thank you. All right, can you all see that? Yes, we can. All right. All right, my concept was a Texas taco truck. It's a food truck concept where you, that makes tacos from slow meats and high quality produce. The slow cooked meats and high quality produce are prepared in an offsite kitchen before services and then stored in the food truck refrigerators. Uh, steered on planches during the orders or during services. The truck will be in Boston, Massachusetts, which is one of the many in one of the many food truck areas around downtown because Boston didn't have very many taco places. I worked there for a month and they only had like a bar taco and a Chipotle for any type of taco sort of place. A lot of the food trucks they had were like seafood, sandwiches, pizza, and even Haitian food, but no taco trucks. It would be a complete success. Yeah, uh, in Boston, there are a lot of. This is kind of what I just went over to. And in Boston, um, they had the misfortune of not. Uh oh, we lost you. We lost them. Happened the same that happened to me. Cameron Enriquez, are you there? Okay, he's back. All right. We cannot. We can't we hear, you. hear you. We can't hear you. All right. For some reason, okay. I need right. There you are. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Well, like I was saying, in Boston, people really don't have access to high quality tacos like we do down here in Texas. So I figured it would be a hit in Boston. Uh, the target demographic would be uh, 
guests that would be uh, professionals and tourists between the ages of 20 and 50. Uh, most of the professionals uh, don't live in downtown Boston, but they live in surrounding areas and commute to work. And the, they're in the middle and upper class uh, income. Uh, they want access to breakfast on their way to work and quick access to lunch on their 30 to 60 minute lunch break. The location would be on the Freedom Trail somewhere in downtown Boston near businesses, which the Freedom Trail is like one of the major tourist attractions in Boston. It's got, it's got such a locations like um, the Boston Tea Party, for example. Uh, demographic would be men, women, 20 to 50, mostly white or African American. Uh, white is 52% of the population of Boston and African American is 25%. Um, 160,000 people work in downtown Boston every day and with the tourists added to it, that's a quarter million total pedestrians walking through downtown Boston every day. So it's a lot of people to get as guests. Uh, the psychographic is uh, highly educated people. 86% of people have a high school diploma or higher. 13% is co some college ed educated. 26.5% have bachelor's degrees and 22% have a graduate or professional degrees. And of course, the on the go tourists on the Freedom Trail. Uh, the behavior will be on the go as a demographic because they'll be going you, you, to you have money to, to, to spend on that yeah all right all right menu list okay for the appetizers i have a lote street corn and a bowl Ooh. which yeah for the appetizers i was really going for um uh, trying something savory something um tangy and then something that everybody has like quesadillas so with the lote corn, it was kind of a, like a savory corn with the cheese and the cayenne and lote mayo. With the chopped salad, I'd have a, a like a oil-based lime cilantro and pepper dressing for it, which would be the like a like a tangy flavor. Quesadillas, which would be for, for someone who's not too adventurous. And then for the tacos. Uh, I got shaver by a sada taco, a chicken pastor taco, a pork carnita, a roasted duck taco, and then a portobello mushroom taco for vegetarians and a cauliflower taco also for vegans. I mean, the portobello mushroom taco can be vegan too if you take the cheese off. Uh, the desserts was a tres leches cake and seasonal fruit with a whipped cream and then a flan. Here's the menu. Beautiful. Yeah, um, the roasted duck, pretty much everything is, all All the menu prices are pretty much with 30% of the food costs in there, ex with the exception of uh, the roasted duck, portobello, and the cauliflower taco, which like, I just, I couldn't charge eight fifty two for a single duck taco or five or six dollars for the portobello or cauliflower tacos. That's why right here I have a, like a $12 taco plate sort of thing where you choose three of any tacos and you get a rice and beans to help uh, make money off of that because the rice and beans collectively only cost me uh, 78 cents to make. Yeah. That's so yeah. smart. That's a, that's a smart way to, 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 to have a to food out, yes. Yeah. And Great I concept, just, uh, my also, friend. Oh, thank you. And you have all these magnets. The, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then I also highlighted the choice like cheesecake and then the chopped salad. And kind of just, I want to, I put all the prices at the bottom in smaller print so you really can't see them unless you, to take your eyes off of the actual menu part. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. Oh yeah, the ticket average. The ticket average I found was around like 1484 with serving like 100 people for lunch and then 100 people for dinner. I can make about 2000 in sales every day, which would be okay, for, I believe, for a food truck. But thinking, looking back on it, I think I could charge a little bit more on the menu price because like when everything in Boston is expensive. 
For example, like I ate at Shake Shack there and I spent $23 on a burger, fries, and a regular shake. And a Shake Shack burger and fries ain't, ain't a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, $2,000 a day is very nice to do, you know? You're talking, you're talking about uh, $20,000 a week. So you're, uh, you are working on a food truck that it's kind of easily can be making you know, $100,000, $120,000 a month, which is great. Uh, and uh, I think you're, it, 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 it's a great idea. In, in, in real life, it's a, you, can, you can use this as, as a start your project because that sounds very nice. Oh, uh, that's everything. <laughs> very great good. job. And such a good idea. You know what? My only thing is. Uh, since there's a lot of fish over, over there also, I should put a fish taco. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Cameron Enrique. Great job. Hey, hey Chef. Yes? Uh, Larrick was asking if he could do it today just because he's got to pick up his knives uh, tomorrow at yeah. the school. Eric Martin. Okay. Yeah, Larrick. At, at some right, point today. You want to do it right now, Lyric? Uh, give me a couple minutes and I'll be ready. Okay, so let's just do after the next presentation, okay? Sounds so, good. So, Cameron Contreras, are you there? He's not here. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's okay. Oh, there you are. You're next. Cameron? What are, what are we doing, Chef? We're presenting our projects. Mm, mine's not done yet. Okay. Then uh, do we want to move on, Chef? Yes. So uh, Cameron Enriquez. Okay. I thought you were calling me too. <laughs> okay. So I, I, do I just click share the screen? Yes. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Let me make sure that good. It's coming up. All right. Can you all see it? Great. Yep. Yes. Okay. So mine is off my restaurant called Off the Wall Barbecue. My concept and mission. Uh, the concept of Off the Wall is we want to be a family-friendly restaurant, and we want to have additional catering services. I accidentally spelled it. I misspelled additionally catering. But um, our, our main thing was that we wanted to kind of start off with both catering and having a restaurant. So we'll have our restaurant open probably on weekends and be catering uh, during the beginning of the week, mainly because kind of COVID, we don't want to be too... Uh, we don't want to be open all the time when uh, business is rarely going to come to us, right? And for a mission, it's kind of our number one goal to be part of our community. Uh, we wanted to actually start, a, we actually had a chance to make a deal with the local schools so that we could lead like the sports teams after their games and stuff. So they'd pay us and we'd go and cater for their games and give all the players food and stuff like that. We also, uh, we would be there with smiles on our faces, serving great food and excellent service is our main goal and mission. For our target demographics, Off the Wall will be located in a fairly small town with about, about 5,000 people. So our goal is to reach probably the, our biggest demographic possible. And the majority of Dimmit, which is the town where um, we're planning on putting this because we already have the real estate and everything for it. Um, it's mainly Hispanics with uh, families, although we don't really plan to go on a, like a Hispanic theme, we plan to appeal to the family aspect, providing a place for a community to eat, as well as uh, families and small groups. Uh, I'd like to have some cheaper options on our menu just to uh, really attract people to go because, I mean, there isn't really, there isn't many restaurants 
endemic, but there's a couple and they're usually kind of small priced and I don't want to, I don't want to show up and overprice everybody or make them feel like they're overpriced. So there's a link to my menu. Um, I just have the title off the wall and this is kind of just a sample menu that I chose from we have menus.com. So I placed my plates and uh, our sandwich and wraps, which is probably what I plan to sell the most of over on the right side. Uh, the popper sandwich, I'm wanting to be pretty popular, but um, I kind of want to lower the price a little bit and find out how to do that. Probably use uh, some cheaper ingredients and stuff like that. Uh, for our appetizers, we kind of just have really big portions of brisket nachos, stuffed jalapenos, and a loaded mac and cheese. The stuffed jalapenos I'm really thinking is gonna be a workhorse that's gonna sell quite a lot, but I won't make too much money off of it. Uh, we also have three choices of sides to go with your plates. It comes with the plates, or you can just get it with any sandwich or wraps that you do. Uh, we also, I already have drinks and I have desserts. Um, I have a picture here and I was gonna put another picture here uh, honestly, I don't really like the look of the pictures and I was just going to add other things, um, probably like genuine pictures of the place or um, kind of like side notes on like if you want extra things. You know, I like, I like the way it, I like it a lot because uh, what I see is that you start slow and little and that's good because you guarantee that you're not gonna you're not gonna lose money. So with with yeah, few yeah. dishes, uh, if you dishes was, you guarantee it's more solid the business. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was the other thing. Like I didn't want to start off with too many things. So a lot yeah. of the things on my menu actually incorporate the same same like ingredients. Yeah. So I, I use the the jalapenos and everything that's used for the poppers twice. I use all my meats multiple times. I use the sausage for the plate, the wrap. And you can even put it on a loaded mac because you get your choice of meat. And to price it out, the loaded mac, I used the most expensive meat, which was the brisket. So either way, I won't be losing money. But they get they have the option of a choice. So maybe they don't like brisket, but they'd rather have sausage or pulled pork. And then the pulled pork uh, is probably only used once. So I kind of want to add a sandwich for it just to give uh, kind of options for that. And uh, the sausage is used for the wrap and the brisket is also used for the wrap. But right here, I, I guess it didn't save when I put in brisket and it didn't save a second photo that I put here. But it's because um, to change the stuff on menus was kind of weird. Uh, you had to like download different links and stuff. Yeah, but you, I, uh, I saw the prices, you are not very far away from the market. Um, yeah, yeah. Because if you go to well any any place here, the brisket is around ten to twelve dollars a pound. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really wanting to lower this yeah. right here. Like I don't know why it came out so priced, but it might have been because um, I used very small batches. I like a lot of these is portioned for one person, and I could probably make make them bigger bulks so that they come out cheaper. Well, that would be good. Great job. Uh, I also have my standardized recipes. Um, I guess we'll go through them just really quick kind of deal. Yep. Uh, I just kind of made a recipe for all, all of my menu items and then I made some sub recipes. So this is the recipe for brisket nachos that I'm going to use as my example. And I have um, eight ounces of tortilla ch chips. They're going to go in there and we're going to buy our tortilla chips and our tortillas from a local business that's actually in the town, which, um, we think it would be really good. Tortilleria. Great. Yeah, um, they're called uh, Gordos or something around that. I've completely forgot their name for a second. But um, yeah, they sell tortilla chips and they sell tortillas and uh, they do breakfast uh, burritos every once in a while. But uh, their main thing is they just sell tortillas and they sell it to local businesses like that. And it's not too expensive. Usually they have a line. Um, we also have, I have brisket and it's highlighted because if you click it, it'll take you to the recipe for the standardized recipe for brisket. And then uh, this one will take you to the, the cheese for the nachos and it'll take you to the recipe. But uh, right now I'm just using canned cheese. 
because it it'd be easier to store and uh, to prep. And then I also have the barbecue sauce, which is implemented in several recipes. And then for menu costing, again, I'll just go over one or two not to try not to take up too much time. just do the the brownie and the ice cream so this brownie recipe I've made so many times uh, I made it in culinary class like hundreds of times and uh, we sell it we sell them at kind of like concession stands and stuff like that and um, it makes a uh, great price like, great price you yeah it makes all the Hannah brownies it makes about 60 brownies and I mean, they're pretty large brownies too. It makes a full a full pan of brownies, like a baking sheet. And you, um, can, you can you can people can pay more than a dollar for that. Yeah, I was thinking I'd probably raise the price a little bit because I'm also going to throw some ice cream in there. So probably can raise it up to about four to five bucks and yeah. make it a like a puzzle on the menu or something yeah. like that, or even bar. But uh, yeah, um, but since it's such a large batch of brownies, it takes like 12 egg and everything. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I put it as dozens of eggs because you can buy a dozen eggs for pretty cheap. Uh, and then this is just my check average and costing. For my check average, really, I just made it to where I just made it to where they bought one or two items, like they bought a, an appetizer or they bought a sausage wrap and an appetizer and maybe a drink and uh, maybe a dessert. You know, I just made it where they bought a couple different yeah, things. Consider your demographic, they don't have to spend too much money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. For the demographic, I don't want to. I don't want them to spend too much money, and I want to lower a lot of the prices. Like I really want. That. That, yeah. yeah, but based off. Just making them buy a couple random things. It ended up being about like twenty three dollars as my my average. A day, a day, yes, by person. Per person, and uh, so I put that in a sales forecast. And really, I thought you know Mondays we wouldn't be really busy. And this is if the restaurant is open Monday through Friday, which are Monday through uh, Sunday, which we really don't plan on being. We want to do kind of weekdays so we don't burn people out of barbecue food because barbecue food is one of those things that you can't eat every day. Yeah. So uh, we're, we'll do catering probably in close nearby towns during the week and um, near the end of the week we'll actually have the restaurant open and I think near the end of the week we'll actually be pretty busy because Friday nights is uh, you know our town has their football games and stuff like that and Saturdays, weekends, and Sundays. Uh, I think Sundays will be very busy during lunch because that's right after church and people like to go and eat in groups yep. after that. And uh, yeah, so our total sell average per week was about two, or about per day was about $2,119. Yeah, that's, that's great. <clears throat> so if you work seven days, you're making what, 15, 15, uh, Fifteen thousand dollars a day, a week, so it yeah. will be sixty thousand dollars a month. It's not bad for small business. It's not bad at all. But yeah, I don't know if I missed anything. Great job, uh, Cameron. Great job. Like it a lot. Your project. Thank you. We we'll have to check a little more and try to get a little more, uh, more, uh, more cheap food. That's the only thing. Yes, that is my main goal on that. Yeah. It really is. To me. I think I just need to raise the amount of portions that I make per batch. Yeah. Maybe that, yeah, the price maybe because the list that we have, that was, we can get better prices than that, yes. Okay, yeah. so uh, let's go, Mar Martin. Uh, yes, Chef. Not here. Is that here, Martin Garcia? Oh, uh, yes, Jeff, I'm here. Oh, here. Oh, I didn't see him, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And I love the name of your restaurant. Thank you, Chef. Oh, I can't get that up. Oh, oh there we go. Well, my name of my restaurant is called Mi Pueblito Mexican Restaurant. I'm added a quote, Un Sabor Único y Tradicional Mexicano de Mexico. Yeah. And one, one of the reasons I chose uh, Mi, Mi Pueblito because uh, you want it sounds more friendly and then like, it sounds like you're going somewhere and it feels feel like you're home. And yeah. my message statement is that our goal is to serve a customer, real Mexican food, treat our customers and staff with respect. And one, one important thing about t- treating uh, a customer with respect is like you want to come back uh, to your restaurant, you know, that customer will see, oh, look, they, they cheers with respect. Um, you want to feel like they're part of the part of the home. And and one, and one thing is that I want uh, my customers to have a, a true flavor of Mexican food. So most like everything has to be handmade and fresh. And and we one thing is that we hope uh, to continue cooking our food fresh and feel proud of our food. That's one one thing that matters the most, feel proud of what you cook and what you serve to the customer. And Walmart, where I'm locating at, my target is at Houston, Texas. Uh, it's a downtown called Discovery Green, and that place is surrounded by buildings. And they're there's surrounded by buildings, like a lot of office workers. So one of my target times are in the lunchtime because being close to the buildings, a lot of people have time to go around and grab their lunch. And also there's a, like a lot of events in downtown and Discovery Green where a lot of people come through, a lot of families and a lot of they bring a lot of their kids, and that's where we, we pueblito kind of stand, stands out in that part because uh, you want families to feel part of the, part of your home, and and right there I can serve them a lot of Mexican food. Where it's In downtown, uh, my, there's the most population. There's like between men between 30 or 45 who work in offices and finance of finance, and and there's a lot of construction too. So that gives me that targets is uh, for my lunch, especially the lunch where it will be pretty packed uh, because people will will have a uh, time to go around grab their lunch, and when I'm choosing these uh, for for lunch, I will have my restaurant. But for during events, I will have a I will have a food truck where I can park around during events and and sell my food. Appetizers, one of the things that I started out with is chips and guac. It's a pretty simple appetizer, but it, guacamole is like what a lot of people, it will catch a lot of people's attention. And I also choose, uh, chose queso fundido, which is a melted cheese with chorizo on top. And chorizo is a very, it is very recognized uh, around the whole U.S. and it's very, it, it sells a lot. And I also chose mini flautas. It's a little a little version of flautas, but the best part about it is that you have a dipping sauce. It can be a, you can choose any hot sauce, guacamole, and and the entrees. I chose a mole. Mole is like a, it's a sweet sauce, chicken dipped in sweet sauce. But it's like something that you, uh, something you feel part of like when you get home. Like when you get home, uh your mom will cook you something like mole. And mole is like, it's a very uh, traditional recipe in Mexico. And we, 
which is uh, green sauce, enchiladas with melted cheese on top with, uh, with chicken. And uh, the most important one is tacos al carbon. Tacos al carbon is, uh, the price for that one is ten ninety five. The reason because I put ten ninety five because meat is very expensive, and I and I put a choice of meat, so they can choose any type of meat, what they want on the tacos, and it comes with a with an order of six. Uh, desserts I chose flan. Flan is a very Mex famous Mexican uh, dessert, and it's uh, I priced that one at two ninety five because I only serving a small portion, not a big portion. Also chose uh, arroz con leche, which is a rice pudding, and I charge them at four ninety five. I'm charging them because I, I'm serving it in a bowl. And also chose pastel de tres leches, which is going to be served in a slice, and I price that one six ninety five. I can barely see my tasks because we're going. Uh, what? Well, I'm not working on uh, on breakfast because um, I'm not doing breakfast because uh, I know a lot of customers won't have time to uh, get grab breakfast because going downtown there's a lot of traffic and then sometimes they, if they go breakfast they'll make it late to work. But what I'm talking the most is lunch, and during the weekdays uh, lunch will be a pretty big hit because of people that work in downtown uh, they'll have time to go grab a lunch and especially being close to them with downtown. It's very small, but they have, they don't have to take a, they can just walk straight to the restaurant. Uh, and then on the weekend will be kind of slow, but it's back when it hits Friday, uh, that's when more, most uh, dinner starts uh, coming up, the sales because of uh, Fridays, that's when events starts happening around downtown. And a lot of people at the work just want to go around and hang out with their friends. And staying up at late at night, especially when downtown is full of clubs, it has a lot of a lot of bar areas, and people can just go after after their time to go eat and have some Mexican food. And my check hour will be twenty one thirty five because I believe one of the biggest hit will be tacos al carbon, which is uh, will be faster for them to grab, and and then the line will go faster. And mostly. Mostly people will also choose, uh, let's say after the bar, they can just choose uh, chips and guac and they can just eat as a snack. And my total salary will be uh, 5,475. That's pretty much, pretty much uh, Oh, okay, so <laughs> I like your project, but I think uh, I have one. The only thing in real life, this will not work so so good. Let me tell you, because if you want to put in downtown Houston, the prices are going to be very, very high. And you know, if you want to put this type of restaurant with low prices, you will never can can even pay the rent over there. So I know another thing, you know, downtown Houston, there's a lot of people who are, you know are, are blue-collar kind of uh, uh, workers and office workers, you know. So not, not too much of families over there you're going to find. It's going to be a lot of workers with little time to do it. So you're going to have difficulties on that. So that's the only thing that I can say. I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I completely agree. But it was, a, was it a food truck? No, it's a um, restaurant, Jeff. Oh, a restaurant. Okay, my my I wrote food truck for some reason. I don't know why. Good job. Good job. Yeah, great job. Um, that one I'm doing both food restaurant and food truck. For the food truck, I'm gonna use that for events where I'm gonna park on a downtown. There's in downtown Houston. There's a lot of events that happen on the weekend, and then there, like especially the Cinco de Mayo, there was a lot of Mexican food trucks around. So I'm planning to have a restaurant and a food truck, food truck especially just more for events. And they got a lot of construction workers too. Gotcha. Yeah. Good work. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs>